is what somebody's talking about. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> As fun as it gets, buddy. I mean, that gives gives one age group a thing to compare Tiger to. Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. The following is a presentation of Radio Alabama Sports. This broadcast is copyrighted by Radio Alabama for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast, descriptions, or accounts of the game without Radio Alabama's consent is strictly prohibited. Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 1045. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Now, let's join Jacob Goins and Christian Griffin. <laughs> Buffalo wings, metal slides in the summer, and Megan Fox in the original Transformers. Probably the only three things that you could compare to are hotter than Lee Scott on the baseball diamond right now. You want to talk about dominance? Winners in their last 17 games are the Warriors, outscoring their opponents 176 to 10 during that win streak. We're going to take a quick break for the prayer and the national anthem. We'll be right back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Gouge Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gougecenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. The following is a presentation of Radio Alabama Sports. This broadcast is copyrighted by Radio Alabama for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast, descriptions, or accounts of the game without Radio Alabama's consent is strictly prohibited.
Lee Scott Academy Baseball is on Tiger Country 1045. Presented by the Orthopedic Clinic, Auburn Express Towing, and Auburn Bank. Also brought to you by Russell Building Supply, Troy Bank and Trust, Gouge Performing Arts Center, and Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Now, let's join Jacob Goins and Christian Griffin. The dominance for the Warriors is an understatement. Winners in their last 17 straight contests, outscoring those opponents 176 to 10 during that win streak. 12 total shutouts and have not surrendered a run to an opposing team in nine straight contests. Hello, everybody, and welcome to game one between the Lee Scott Warriors and Valiant Cross. A little bit of a late start as Valiant had a little bit of trouble getting here. So we are hopping right into it this afternoon on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you along for the ride. Hot start indeed. And you then, mentioned Valiant uh, having, like you said, a little trouble getting here. And so uh, they came in, did a very quick uh, field warm up, did a little bit. Lee Scott was kind of warming up as they were waiting on Valiant to get here. And and so, hey, good thing is we're here. We're underway. First pitch is a ball. And, uh, yeah, we got two games to play this afternoon. Game one of the series was last night. Lee Scott went down to Valiant, or up to Valiant, I should say, 118 to nothing. And they've got games two and three here this afternoon. Second pitch grounded over to Butler at third. He'll fire across the diamond for out. Number one will set the defense for the Lee Scott, Lee Scott Warriors starting in left field. It'll be Burns, Harkins, and West in the outfield. Across the diamond, Butler, Hardy, Martin, and Jackson. It'll be Lane Eddins behind the dish. And Jake Cummings on the mound for the Warriors. Our very quick Russell Building Supply countdown to first pitch. It was all of about a minute or so. The Russell Building Supply countdown to first pitch was brought to you by Russell DeWitt Center and Building Supply Experience and Knowledge from the Pros at your hometown home center. A dribbler back to Jake Cummings on the first pitch. Gets it on the hands. He will walk it over to first and flip it over there for out number two. So quick two, two outs for... Valley across top half of the first inning, and that pitch is on the inside part of the plate for ball number one. And apologies, we we do not have a a roster or a lineup for for Valiant, so we'll we'll get that one as we go. And in the home half, we'll get the starting lineups for the Warriors in the batting lineup. But two away quickly here in the top half of the first swing and a miss from Jay Cummings. Starting lineups are brought to you by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olene Price, who reminds you that if you need services from her office, there's the main office at the courthouse in Opelika and satellite offices in Auburn and Smith Station. And that ball is on the outer half of the plate. Four strike, three quick, three up, three down for Jake Cummings. When we come back, we'll set everything up for it. It's a little bit of a different doubleheader than what the traditional doubleheader consists of. All of that when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. It's Lee Scott Baseball game time. The first inning is brought to you by Auburn Bank on Tiger Country 104.5. It'll be Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, and Sam Jackson due up for the Warriors in the top or the home half of the first. And a reminder that the first inning of today's broadcast is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you, and proud to sponsor Lee Scott. Warrior baseball, again, going through the entire lineup for the Warriors. Ethan Hardy, Garrett West, Sam Jackson, one, two, and three. J.D. Burns, Jake Cummings, and Braden Butler round out the middle. It'll be Brandon Martin, Lane Eddins, and Smith Harkins to round out seven, eight, and nine. And again, a little bit of an unconventional doubleheader here at John Meals Field as since game one started a little bit later, as soon as game one goes final, we are rolling right into game two. So. Warrior fans, you do not have to miss any action 
as there will be no more than a five minute, almost a a halftime, if you will, but we are picking up game two right where game one lets off as Ethan Hardy makes his way to the dish. First pitch up around the eyes, and he'll take it for ball one. The 1 0. Misses down around the shoe tops for ball two. Lee Scott in their home whites with the Warriors across the chest and the the blue power strip along the sides, the blue numbers with the red outline. Valiant in their row charcoal grays with the charcoal pants as well. There we go. We did end up getting. I got it. Don't worry. Uh, thanks up. to thanks to some generous parents that were able to grab it before we could. That's how we go at least, Scott. Here, man, we get it one way or the other. Hardy swings and miss. The count runs even to two and two. A ball dribble over to shortstop. He'll field it on a hot fire over to first in time. Four out number one. Nice play there from the shortstop running to his left. And the ability to field it and fire it all in one motion to get the speedy hardy. Garrett West will dig into the right-handed batter's box for his first action of the contest. And again, we go back to the dominance of the Warriors riding, again, about as hot of a of a win streak as you can as that's on the outer half for a college strike one. Winners in their last 17 contests. And I don't care who you're playing, what level you're playing. You better believe It's hard that. to get a win streak, but 17 is is a little bit more as that one skips right over the second base bag and, and rides into center field. So West is aboard for the Warriors. First hit of the afternoon for either side. As Sam Jackson makes his way to the plate. Lee Scott on the offensive side, outscoring their opponents in those 17 games, 176 to 10. That's insane. And you heard that correctly, 176 to 10, allowing just over a run a game. But that also complements the pitching even more because in that 17-game win streak, 12 of those have been shutouts. And shutouts in nine straight contests. Again, I mean, you want to talk about dominance in all levels of the game. Lee Scott is doing that. Clicking on all cylinders. That ball misses eye level. Garrett West will take second standing up. And again, that's something that we've talked about or that I've highlighted in the open a couple of times is how there's four levels to the game. And if you're if you're a team and you can win two or three of those, you really like your chances at the plate, on the mound, the defense, and then on the bases and stealing those extra bases, those four aspects of the game. And, I mean, it's hard to say that the Warriors haven't, haven't done a clean sweep in every single one of those aspects of these last games. The last team to put up more than one run was Macon East. They put up four. Well, something that we've already seen here in, in the bottom half of the first, they get a runner on and they move him uh, almost immediately. Yeah. And, and that's just what they do. And, and look, they're not just going from first to second. They'll go second to third if they need to. That ball swing and miss. I thought it was foul tip, but instead got behind the catcher and will roll all the way to the backstop. And there it, is, there it is again, taking advantage of the defensive mistakes. And Garrett West now stands 90 feet from home plate. And we've seen this guy do it time and time again. Sam Jackson with a chance to do some damage early in a baseball game. That ball is fouled into the third base dugout. Almost made a play. Head coach <laughs> covering his face with the clipboard a little bit, holding the laughter <laughs> in to the the one sub for Valiant Cross. So, again, a a minimal roster. As that ball is ripped down the third base back, it's going to be fair. There's a little bit of hesitation, but that is a fair ball. That'll roll into the corner. It's going to be at least a double for Sam Jackson. He will pump on the brakes as that ball is thrown in. So as you talked about it, doing it time and time again, Jackson 
the ability to keep the ball fair down the third base line, and just like that, Warriors with a one nothing lead. Well, the hesitation was from the home plate umpire because there's only two umpires here, and so you've got one home plate umpire and the other is That's in true, the field, yeah. and so the home plate umpire is the one that had to make the fair call. So he had to judge the pitch, step up and turn, and what was really a 50-50 ball on that third base line, he called it fair. I think it was the right call, Christian, but that's a tough play to make in a bang-bang situation. Home plate umpire calls it fair, points the arm out to the right, and it's an RBI double for Sam Jackson. one nothing, Lee Scott. Yeah, good call in most area games. You do have those three umpires. That ball from J.D. Burns is ripped into right field. It's going to be a one-hop, and that gets by the right fielder. Sam Jackson will score without a throw. J.D. Burns rounds second, making his way to third, and he will be held there. So give Burns an RBI single and then a two-base error by the right fielder. You know what's J.D. Give... Burns 90 feet away as well? You don't want to give him the triple on that? I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I think it's a single. That would be a... That'd be a heck of a, that'd be a, heck of a triple. But I would agree giving him the single and the two-base error. That fastball runs inside the Jake Cummings. I think it may have hit on the on the button of the bat or maybe on the handle of the bat of Jake Cummings, if I could see it correctly. The one in the dirt. Blocked by the catcher, so Burns makes his way back to third. But, again, good call on your eyes. Usually having three umpires – for area games to where if you hit it, you can look over at the third base umpire to see if he's calling fair or foul because he's right on top of it. But a good catch from the home plate umpire. And again, I think it was the correct call. Ground ball to third base. Throw made over to first will be in time for out number two. Burns with a slide into home. And he will be safe. So great base running from Burns as soon as the third baseman released it. He took off to home and beat the throw for the third run of the afternoon. 3 nothing, Lee Scott, and it's something they just do each and every game. They get them on, they get them on early, and they're going to move them with effective hitting. And even though that one ended up being an out, it's still another run batted in, and Lee Scott's put on three here early. Oh, that ball runs inside to Praden Butler, and it hits him. It sounded like it cracked the helmet. It did not sound like <laughs> it, really it, it flooded the helmet. It definitely sounded like there was a crack in there. I want to take a look at that. But he will make his way. Down to first base. And as you're talking about, just the ability to do the right things, both on the bases and at the plate. The ABC baseball, when it's needed, the ability to scratch runs across when it's needed, when you're not necessarily putting up crooked number innings every single inning. The ability to, to win tight games and to feel comfortable in tight games, knowing that you can put back-to-back -back selfless at-bats and capitalizing on defensive mistakes. Another throw over. But Butler's back in time. It is Bray Boy on the mound for Valiant Cross. I'd be surprised if they do it again. I was surprised to see it the second time. A delayed steal from Braden Butler. That ball is in the dirt, and he will advance to second standing up. Something I talk about all the time, and, and it it's doesn't such a, matter. Such a good play. What's that? The, the delayed steal. Oh, oh yeah, the delayed. I was talking about the throwback over to first oh, uh, where where <laughs> – I mean, high school or – That ball is grounded to third. It's going to be a close play. And Brandon Martin beats it out. So we give him an infield hit. Braden Butler advances to third. So runners on the corners for two with two away. Go, go ahead. It was White on the left side, the shortstop, who waited basically on the back end of the grass out there by left field and waited on the ball to get there, which gave Martin a chance to run it out. He's speedy. He comes in as a pinch runner all the time. And so he came in and beat it out, and the runner's on the corners for Lee Scott. Runner's going to go. His Martin catcher won't pop up. No play to be made. And runner's on second and third. But the throw back over to first from the pitcher, you start doing it over and over and over again. And the more times you do it, the more likely you are to to – to make an error. I mean, the more you do it, you're just asking for disaster. That 1-0. Crypt foul down the third baseline. Charlene Eddins with that bright orange bat. Looking to break this one open in the home half of the first. Runners on second and third. Two away here in the home half of the first inning. The 
the 1-1. One, one. Runs inside. Again, if we're just now joining us, a little bit of an unconventional doubleheader. As soon as game one ends, we are hopping right in to game number two. The 2-1 two is ripped past the shortstop. White, one run will score, two runs will score. Lane Edens is making his way to second, and he will make it standing. So Lane Edens, nice piece of hit, not trying to do too much with it, ripped it into left center field. You give him a two-out RBI double. In games like this where you are – up early, and you you are obviously going to be a team that is is going to have a lead for the majority of today. It's important to to have a you know a heads up, and I know you've talked about this a lot during games, but just having the the heads up awareness to have good at bats and maintain good at bats and await good pitches, and and if you see one, to go after it, and and that's what Lee Scott's done here early. They put a five piece on him in the bottom half of the first. Smith Harkins watches that first pitch. Miss upstairs for ball one. Five nothing Warriors here in the home half of the first inning. And again, yeah, just continuing to play the game the right way. That's the biggest thing. The ball is li lifted down the left field line. That'll bounce beyond the fence to even the count at one and one. What's important too here is the fact that these games, these games matter. I mean, yeah. these are these are region games that that Lee Scott is is needing for postseason. Two play. one is in the dirt, and it's Ty Jones that replaced Lane Edens, the catcher. So he steals third, standing up, something I think you might see at least early in both of these games. The 2-1 from Brayboy to Harkins is lifted down the left field line. That is just foul beyond the fence, so the count runs even. Deuces wild on the scoreboard, two balls, two strikes. And two outs. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Wherever you're tuning in from, we thank you for tuning in and for your support of Lee Scott Baseball. Overcast skies, a little bit of a breeze, chillier than it was yesterday, but wouldn't say it's chilly by any means. The 2-2. Swung on, grounded over to Owens at first. He will pick it up. And quickly, we'll step on first to beat Harkins by a step for out number three. So the side is retired in the home half of the first inning, but not before the Warriors strike for a big one. They're out in front 5 nothing as we head to the top half of the second inning on the Lee Scott Sports Network, presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's Glue Guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. 5 nothing Warriors as we begin the second inning here at John Mills Field on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. Whether you're having car trouble in an accident or you own a business and need a car move, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. It was five runs put up by the Warriors in the bottom half of the first inning. They take that 5 nothing lead to the top half of the second. Jake Cummings back out for another inning of work. First pitch is down and away for ball number one. And it appears to be number 22, Owens, who is up to bat for Valley Across. They are going to say it was tipped away and then 
They're going to call that a fair ball. They it's said it was the correct call. It hit it home is. plate. And it did. It hit. I didn't know if it hit home plate or hit behind home plate. Owens didn't know what the call was, and the home plate umpire just simply pointed into the field of play. So that was a fair ball. It was a dribbler about five feet in front of home plate, and Lee Scott throws it down to first, and the first out is recorded in one of the most unconditional ways you'll see, one of the most least dramatic ways you'll see. But, hey, it's – the first out of the inning, and it's now an 0-1 count. Cummings works quickly, swung up and missed on the second pitch. For Valley across, it's a quick 0-2 hole now with one away. Nobody on top half of the second inning. Cummings fires on the outside, makes it a 1-2 count. Appreciate you all being with us on Tiger Country 104.5. It's a mid-afternoon baseball on a Tuesday, and that one's in for a call. It's strike three, lower part of the plate. For out number two. And it is number six money now in for Valley Across. He'll step in right and then left. He's got nobody on. Two away in the top half of the first inning. As the first pitch was a ball, second pitch is delivered on a fastball for the first strike. It's a 1-1 count, two away. Now Cummings working quickly on money, swung out with it on the neon orange bat. Can't get there. It's a 1-2 count, two away. Cummings looking to get out of it. Here's the 1-2. Went upstairs, got him swinging on the fastball, strike three. Three up, three down. It was another good inning of work on the mound. Lee Scott looks to expand on a 5 nothing lead. We come back to the bottom of the second on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult to source laser engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with with local attention. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. Let's get back to the game. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 104.5. To the home half of the second inning we go. It'll be back to the top of the lineup in Hardy, West, and Jackson. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. And the first of many times that it is being brought up, he won't bring it up himself, but the voice of the Lee Scott Warriors by the Alabama Bird Broadcasting Association has won the Alabama Sportscaster of the year, man. Congratulations. It's, I mean, again, I've, as casual as I've, I've joked with you about it, it is honored as an understatement to be able to do this with you, be able to learn from you, be able to, to simply share everything and all, all of these experiences, man. Congratulations. I love, love doing this. And I know the Lee Scott family appreciates you as well. Yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. And it's, it's, it really is something that um, was, was unexpected. Um, I, I was there on Saturday in Birmingham and, and was, Oh my goodness, another one off the helmet. Sorry. <laughs> I to completely cut that off. That one at least sounded more like a thud. Yeah. It hit off like where the, where the helmet and the brim actually meet of the batting helmet. And so uh, that was Ethan Hardy that took one off the helmet. And now Garrett West going to come up and try to move him around. But um, no, man, it, it, it really is. 
an honor to to have been named the brought the sportscaster of the year in the state of Alabama for 2024. Um, really just an honor and something that would not be possible without Lee Scott, without the players, the families, the coaches, uh, William Johnson, the athletic director. And of course, without you, my man, my my wonderful color commentator, you've been with me since baseball season last year. Yeah. So um, you actually just passed your your I one say, year I with got us. The, I got the text from from Miss Tracy that got the <laughs> said happy one year. Yeah, that's right. Like, man, it that's feels right. like it's been a whole lot longer than that, but it also feels like it hasn't been that long at all yeah well um everybody that's that's tuned in and listened and supported and, and helped us out man it truly is for those here at least scott for those on the road when we go uh to region games i mean in in all the games for football and, and some of those and, and everything it's just it, it really is such an honor and a blessing and and to be as young as i am and raw as i am it really is an honor pick off throw to ethan hardy but owens at first bobbles it so hardy will advance to second he was caught Good pickoff move from Bray Boy, but the bobble from Smith at first, and just like that, another runner in scoring position for the Warriors and Garrett West. Another throw over. He likes those throw overs. Uh, the, it's the just first so and dangerous. Second, and especially with no outs and a runner in scoring position, all of a sudden that ball gets into center field. He's at least at third, if not making his way all the ra- all the way around and scoring. And with his speed, I think he would probably just come around and score at this point. There's another one. And that's a pretty oh. close play, and they're going to call him out. Oh! He went with the inside move instead of the, the leg kick backwards. He just did the quick spin. Wow. And as we're sitting there talking about it, there we go. There's <laughs> hey, man, shut another us perfect up, right? example wow. of it. So instead of nobody, nobody out in a runner in scoring position, that ground ball hits a wide at short, throw over to first, and just like that, quickly to away in the home half of the second inning. How about that? We talk talked about Valiant Cross doing yeah. that. I mean, that was that was nice. I mean, we're sitting here, and, and I don't want to say we're, we're dogging on them for doing it, but we were kind of questioning why they were throwing it around so much. And then all of a sudden, in two little plays, two big plays, really, they throw out the lead runner, and they get a ground out from Garrett West, one of the most powerful bats in the Lee Scott lineup. Work just like a double play. One pitch, two outs. Is that fastball to Sam Jackson's on the outer half for a called strike? Which could possibly take a little bit of wind out of the sails of Lee Scott, where you put up a five-piece in the bottom half of the first. You had your runner on. You were about to start doing the same thing you did an inning ago, and here you are. You're two outs away, or you're two outs down now with just one to go in this second inning. Jackson was trying to call time. I don't think the home plate umpire saw it in time, but that ball misses in the dirt for ball two. Again, 5 nothing. your score between Lee Scott and Valiant Cross. Lee Scott with a five-spot. In the first, trying to capitalize and build here in the home half of the second. In game one of the doubleheader, game two of the series. A 3-1. This is downstairs. So Sam Jackson reaches base safely for the second time and has many at-bats. All these guys were very active in the first inning. When it came to having a bat in their hands, they all got on. All were touching bases and, and bringing around many of those five runs. Sam Jackson brought home the first on that double down the third baseline. J.D. Burns digs in. He singled his first time up, and the right fielder with an error ended up getting all the way to third and then scored on the fielder's choice. And this is another area that Lee Scott has, has excelled in in this year is another throw over. He's got more velocity going to first than he does going to the plate. But sometimes he does. I mean, he turns and just whips it over to first. And and I think that's why Sam Jackson has has sort of cut his his lead off about in half because when Bray Boy turns around and throws it, it's it's a bullet. That's a slow dribbler. Two third. Robertson's gonna throw over to first, but that's gonna be not in time. JD Burns legs out an infield hit. He'll take it nonetheless. Looks like a line drive in the book. So J.D. Burns now two for two in the contest. But, again, going back to it as Jake Cummings digs in, an aspect that Lee Scott has excelled in, especially this year, making the big jump 
is being able to get runners on and get runners in with two outs. The ability to score two out runs, if you can get two or three of those in a game, statistically, your odds of winning the game go substantially, I mean, increased. So knowing that, I mean, again, it's the mindset of knowing you still have 33% of your inning left. We'll see if the Warriors can do so here as that ball gets into center field, and it does look like they will do it. Sam Jackson will score. J.D. Burns makes his way to third, standing up. So just like that, they got the two outs, and three straight base runners have reached for the Warriors, and they bring that sixth run home across. I think you have the opposite of the broadcaster, Jinx, man. Every time <laughs> you start talking about something, it normally happens. And when I start talking about something, it it never – I talk, if it's something bad, it always happens. If it's something good, it's the opposite. I don't know, man. Yeah, somehow you win the awards. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't submit those clips for, for for judging when it came to the Abbeys. They they didn't want to hear those. Me talking about double plays being turned and free throws being made. The only, the only thing we can't allow here is a double play. Uh, I, six, I four, promise three, I will right? never say that again, ever. Fastball misses upstairs, and Cummings makes his way to second base. That fastball misses upstairs as well. Two another count to Braden Butler, who was hitting the helmet his first time up. And for those wondering, well. Christian, how did he repay you for, for all of your work after winning an award? He goes to Augusta uh, without <laughs> me. That ball is lifted. Get down. In the left field, that's going to short hop the left fielder. One run will score. Two runs will score. Braden Butler makes his way to second standing up. And just like that, again, we talked about a two on, nobody out. And just like that, before you can blink, four straight base runners, three straight hits. And Warriors with three runs in the home half of the second and counting with an 8 nothing lead. Hard hit ball, kind of in an awkward spot for uh, for the left fielder, for, for Valiant, and, and it's one of those where you have to judge it in time. Ball's lifted into left center field. That's going to get down as well. Brandon Martin says, hey, whatever you can do, I can do just as well, if not better. Good for Brandon Martin. That's a great hit, and not that he's not capable. Ball gets away, gets all the way over to the first baseman, and Martin, with the speed and heads up that he has, base running, he's all the way to third. And again, more of a uh, speed guy in Brandon Martin, but he steps up and just belts it into center field, and now he's got a, himself on third base with two away. Lane Eddins. Digs in with a double his first time up, looking to capitalize once again. Middle infield playing way over in their gap, so a lot of room up the middle of the field. That was right where Lane put it last time, almost split the umpire and the pitcher his last time up and legged out a double. Looking to see what he can do this time up. The first two pitches missed downstairs. Good block from Money behind the plate. Maybe they just really trust Bray Boy's defense in the middle. I mean, that, he is <laughs> the ranges. lone he is the lone defender on that island of the mound right now. If it's hit anywhere up the middle, it's him and him alone. Ball instead is ripped down the third baseline, goes through the tarp. That was kind of cool. <laughs> Don't think I've ever seen that. We'll have time while the left fielder chases it down. He's been busy here early especially in the second inning. Five straight have reached safely, four straight hits. Sam Jackson with a walk, J.D. Burns with a single, Jake Cummings with a single, and then back-to-back -back doubles from Braden Butler and Brandon Martin is where we stand in the home half of the second inning with Lee Scott in control, nine to nothing. Lane Eddins awaits a 3-1 count. He takes it for strike two, so the count runs full. A true full count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. The three, two. In on the hands. But Edens fouls it straight back off the netting. Speaking of Augusta, I mean, field here at John Mills Field, I mean, that, that green... Not too many fields that you could even draw that comparison and feel like it's respectable. That ball Whoa. thought it missed outside and said it's going to be oh. called strike three. Oh. Home plate umpire is ready to get this game. Oh, Move turn, my, turn my mic off. <laughs> well, through the questionable call, Warriors still strike for four in the home half of the second inning, all with two outs. We head to the top of the third inning. Warriors in control, 9 nothing here on the Lee Scott Sports Network. 
What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Experience from the pros. Russell Dewitt Center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience from the pros. Russell Dewitt Center at Building Supply. This is where the Warriors play. Your Lee Scott baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. We're through two here at John Meals Field in game two of the three game series. Game one of the doubleheader here with you this afternoon on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Warriors with a 9 nothing lead over Valiant Cross. I don't know if it was a compliment that you compared John Mills Field to Augusta National or not that John Mills isn't great, but compared Augusta or National Augusta to is... a high school baseball field. I mean, look, I've said it numerous times. John Mills Field is one of the nicest. What all the renovations that they did a year ago coming in to last year and to this year. I mean, this is one of the nicest fields you're going to see uh, across the state. I'm fully convinced. First pitch. In there for a called strike. Jake Cummings on the mound for his third inning of work. Inside fastball. Swing and a miss. Down quickly to 0-2. I don't know. I mean, I know you don't see the fairway too often when we're playing golf, but, I mean, the, the infield right there, the stripes, it does. Looks like a nice little fairway. A fastball painted on the outer half for a called strike. Three Cummings picks up his fourth strikeout of the young afternoon. Yeah, the dirt down the down the sides of the field over there in foul territory looks a lot more like the ground that I hit it's off more of. Like on the other side of the wall. Oh the, yeah, in the trees. Those and... those tall things called trees. Yeah, I normally am in there a lot more. First pitch swinging is Robertson. He comes up empty. There's some concrete around here. I've definitely hit off of that a few times. Fastball goes upstairs with it, and Robertson comes up empty again quickly. No balls and two strikes. The velocity is really showing for Jake Cummings, and it's really shown the last couple of times he's been on. I mean, it's just it's just really, really impressive to watch. Ooh. He just oh <laughs> snaps off oh. a curveball. And oh. I wasn't not impressed by it, but I saw it coming because he gave the catcher the curveball signal. Wow. You know, when you're warming up and you flip the yeah. glove, he gave the signal. But snapped off a beautiful curveball. Well, I talked about the speed, and then he just went went a little movement on it. Fastball runs in on the kneecaps. I'm not trying to lie. play it off. I think I, if that hits you, you're not right in the knees. You're not just walking <laughs> down to first. I thought it hit. I'm going to oh, be really. I really did, CG. I thought it hit him, and he was questioning whether he was going to get the call or not. And the and his guys in the dugout were saying, "Take your base." And then the home plate umpire said, "Not so fast." Got to sell it better than that, right? You got to believe in it. A two zero. -oh. And this is downstairs, and that's the thing we've seen with Cummings over the past couple of years. The velocity's always been there. It's finding the consistency in the strike zone, and it's something that we've seen this year. It's been a strength of his, to be to be completely honest. He's turned that weakness or the, the thing that's not necessarily so consistent into a big-time strength, and it's showing again today. That 3-0 fastball right down Sanford Avenue for a called strike one. That one on the outer half. Four called strikes. The count runs full. Three balls, two strikes, two outs in the top half of the third inning. A 3 2. There's a fastball. It misses outside. The batter Upton wanted no piece of it, anyways. I think that was that was a better called strike than, than the, the one, one on Lane Edmonds. Yeah, the one that ended the inning. Oh. 
We flip the lineup back to Bray Boy. Bray Boy grounded out to third his first time up to lead off the game. Bray Boy also on the mound for the VC Warriors. Watches the first pitch in there for a called strike one. The 1 in there on the outer half of the plate. That outside fastball, again, with the velocity, if you're not expecting it, so hard to get the barrel to. Quickly ahead, 0-2, snaps off a curveball, misses in the left-handed batter's box. And something you got to think about, this will be, athletically, this will be one of the last times that Lee Scott and Valiant Cross get together with the Warriors moving to to the AHSAA the one starting two next year. There's a curveball, and Bray Boy swings out of his shoes but comes up empty. Cummings with his sixth strikeout of the afternoon. And to that, we head to the home half of the third inning. Lee Scott in control ahead. Nine to nothing here on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 104.5. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need. Troy Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality, innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Towing. Now, back to the action. It'll be Smith Harkins, Ethan Hardy, and Garrett West due up for the Warriors in the home half of the third inning. Warriors of Lee Scott, that is, leading the Warriors of Valiant Cross 9-0. to zero. Christian Griffin and Jacob Goins here with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Before this at-bat, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Lee Scott Sports Network. Tiger Country 104.5 is WAUE HD2, Waverly, Auburn, Opelika. Tiger Country 104.5. Smith Harkins digs in, rips a first pitch fastball into right field. And that's going to short hop the right fielder. He misplayed it. That's going to get down and roll to the wall. Smith Harkins rounds second and makes his way to third. It's going to over throw the cutoff, man. He hit that ball so hard. It had a lot of top spin on it and dove on the right fielder a little bit, and it got past him, and I don't think you can call that an error. That's going to be a triple for Smith Harkins. Well, he dropped in front of him, and he just, yeah, he misplayed it, but he never actually touched it, and so I would. I, I would record it as That's a triple. Right. I mean, and I know we, so, yeah, he hit yeah. it so hard. It had so much top spin. Mm -hmm. I think it was just a really well-hit ball, but it was a tough play. Was it a makeable play? Sure. That ball gets passed, hits the wood, or the bricks, rather, behind the backstop and rolls all the way almost back to the mound down the first baseline. And one pitch later, so two pitches into the inning, Warriors have tacked on another run. Yeah, the run comes in to score on the on the wild pitch. And it's Ty Jones coming in for Ethan Hardy. First two pitches miss upstairs. Two O's in there for a called strike. Breeze picking up a little bit. Nothing too crazy here at Lee Scott. Smith Harkins can say that the wind kept that ball in play. Instead sure. Of, instead of poking it over the fence, the 3 1 to Jones is Spike. So Jones will make his way to first base. And again, we've talked about it a little bit before. I've talked about it over the past couple of games. When, winning streaks are, are difficult in themselves, regardless of who you're playing, regardless at the level, you're still playing baseball. And baseball is such a humbling game. 
you have to continue to play it the right way. You respect the game. You respect your opponent. You respect yourself. Well, it's tough to win. Exactly. And you have to take those those small wins before you can get the big wins. And Warriors of Lee Scott, I mean, again, just doing doing the correct things, doing the right things that they need to do, continuing to have good at-bats. It's so easy to lose focus in a game like this where you're in control. That ball is lifted into right center field. That's going to drop and get down. That's going to turn into a long single. Ty Jones is rounding third, and he will score standing up. What base running from Jones scored from first on a ball that one-hopped the right fielder. He never slowed down. I think he might have ran through the stop sign. He may have, and and I honestly wasn't looking at the third base coach. I probably should have been, but I was watching the ball to see, A, if it was going to be caught, which it was not, and then if Garrett West was going to keep peeling and challenge at second. He got about halfway and then decided to go back, but because of the throw all the way in from center right field, it wasn't extremely accurate, but it got all the way in here. Garrett West was then able to jog down to second base. So out of all that, another run scores, and the Warriors have one on second, still nobody out. To give Garrett West a single advance to second on the throw to the plate. So he's now two for three on the afternoon. And he will take third base. Standing up as Alan Owen digs in for his first plate appearance of the afternoon. The 2 0 is fouled straight back off the netting. Allen. Hits the bat with a little, or hits his, the bat with his hand, with showing a little frustration, thinking he should have gotten a hold of that one. Solid turnout for the Lee Scott fans on a early start on a Tuesday afternoon. The two one runs inside, got him, and hits Owen right in the number four on the back. First pitch gets away from money behind the plate. So one run will score. The other will advance to third. I'm sorry, we had a gust of wind coming in. Our paper started flying everywhere. Thank you, sir. Fastball misses downstairs, brings the count to two balls and one strike. Fastball on the outer half. Four called strike, evens the count at two and two. 12 0 your score. Lee Scott in control. Davis up to the bat, up to, up to the bat. And that runs inside and hits him on the inside elbow, so he'll make his way down to first base as well on the hit-by-pitch. Mm. Apologies, trying to get everything sorted here again. A 12 nothing your score, Lee Scott. In control, runners on the corners, nobody out for Bo King. who digs in for his first plate appearance of the afternoon. Fastball misses outside. And Davis will advance to second without a throw. 
So two now in scoring position for King. A fastball, a called strike to even the count at one apiece. The 1-1. One, one. Misses outside and gets by money and hits off the backstop but rolls close enough to the plate to keep both runners at bay. So a fortunate break for Valley and Cross. Two one, lifted down the right field line. That'll be foul. It'll short hop the hitter barn, and the count runs even once again at two and two. Fastball, a little chin music for Bo King. He backs out of the way for ball three. So a count full. A 3-2 from Gray Bowie to King. Gets in on the hands. But lifts it foul down the first baseline. So we'll do the payoff once again. That runs inside. And hits Bo King, so he'll make his way down to first. And the bases are loaded still with nobody out. And it looks like we're going to have some sort of substitution, it looks like. Head coach for Valiant Cross. Has a meeting, and now head coach Cook will make his way and there's going to be a discussion and they call it ball game. So that, that, yeah, I think that is the case. They looked like there was going to be a, a substitution, but they just didn't have, with again, only the one substitution for Valiant Cross. They're unable to make the pitching change, so that will do it. And if they're calling it in game one, I wonder if that will, will change it for game two or if we are still looking at, at having that doubleheader. Apologies, a bit of an unconventional wrap-up to game one. And again, we were talking about it to where there was just going to be a very quick turnaround for, for game two. Because we're still trying to, to figure everything out. But what we do know, what we have figured out is that the Warriors are victorious in game one. Winning that one 12 to zero. We'll be back here in two minutes to try and figure everything out. We'll finish wrapping up the orthopedic clinic post game show and try to get you some information on what the game two schedule is going to be looking like. The Warriors are victorious in game one. We'll be back here on the Lee Scott Sports Network in two minutes. Life isn't made for joint or orthopedic pain. It's made for living, for family, for your favorite hobbies, for sports, for morning walks and afternoon playing in the park. If you suffer from joint or orthopedic pain, turn to the experts at the Orthopedic Clinic. Our board-certified surgeons provide cutting-edge surgical procedures and high-quality innovative services all close to home. Don't let joint or orthopedic pain keep you from doing all the things you love. Visit theorthoclinic.com and schedule an appointment today. Where'd you go? Favorite sports team has a good guy. Common song here that does the dirty. Society's blue dots and car towing companies. Whether your car needs to get an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. 
Julie Clark, they will call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. ABT specializes in parking lot and private oh, property so. towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Mobile Road. Signal. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern style sauce, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and sauce. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Yeah, make sure we're playing the right. We gotta make sure we're playing the right. I know there's not too much space for the kids. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You can find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Public. <laughs> The Goose Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at goosecenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-T-I-X-S. Warriors are victorious in game one of the doubleheader. Game two of the three-game series with Valiant Cross. They win this one 12 to nothing. And again, apologies for leaving with some confusion. We will have game three, game two of the doubleheader here in just a few minutes. I believe all we are doing is waiting for the umpires to switch and let the, the field umpire throw on the gear. And we will get right on with game two. But again, game one was called because of the lack of pitching. So I wonder if it's going to be a similar situation here in game two. But what we do know is the Warriors did what they do, continue to pile on runs, winning at 12 to zero, have now tallied it on and have not allowed a run in 10 straight contests. And again, it doesn't matter who you're playing. That's a tough thing to do. It's a tough thing to pick up wins. And the win streak now moves to 18 games. Yeah, it really is impressive. And, and this Lee Scott team is it's just rolling. And, and you know, situations in this, it's it's unfortunate that it, it ends the way that it ended. But the game here in front of you and, and try to get better each and every day. So Lee Scott's done that through the first two. They'll try to do that again coming up in game three in probably just a few minutes. Have now outscored their opponents in this 18 game win streak 188 to 10. When you're averaging over 10 runs a game and you're averaging only surrendering almost 0.5 runs a game, I think you're doing a couple of things right. I think if I you're think so, I think if you're a coaching staff, I, I think you're finding some more positives than negatives in the meetings. But we'll go to a quick break here. Again, it shouldn't be be too too long as both teams are just having their final little warm-ups before we get ready for game two at John Meals Field. But again, Warriors victorious in game one, winning 12 to 0. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere on the Lee Scott Sports Network on Tiger Country 1045. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. 
Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle moved, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience a village from the pros. Russell Druid Center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience a village from the pros. Russell Druid Center at Building Supply. What's up, guys? This is Uncle Keith, founder of Uncle Keith's Red Sauce, Southern-style salsa, born in our Alabama kitchen, now found in local stores like Kroger, Publix, and Piggly Wiggly. Uncle Keith's Red Sauce goes well with burritos, nachos, taco night, and that old faithful chips and salsa. Order and ship nationwide to your friends and family at UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. Remember, y'all, that's UncleKeith'sRedSauce.com. It's the best darn salsa you'll ever eat. It's good, y'all. Home buying has never been simple. In today's economy, it's vital to work with an experienced lender who understands your needs. Auburn Bank's mortgage lending team is made up of local folks who can help you navigate the process. Whether it's finding your dream home or making improvements to your existing home, stop by our new home in the Auburn Bank Center. We'll be glad to help. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, online at auburnbank.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 403461. Owner Sean Snow founded Advanced Graphics in 2004 to satisfy a missing service need in East Alabama. 20 years later, Advanced Graphics has proven mission accomplished. For any comprehensive graphic need, vehicle wraps, decals, signs, custom apparel, and even those difficult-to-source laser-engraved ADA signs. The dedicated staff at Advanced Graphics offers exceptional quality with amazing customer service. Contact Advanced Graphics today at 334-501-8600. That's 501-8600. Advanced Graphics in Auburn. World-class service with with local attention. Back here at John Mills Field, still awaiting the start of game two of the afternoon. We were told 10 minutes in between the end of game one and the start of game two. And so uh, we should be coming up on that in any moment now. I was just talking to head coach Cook, and, and he said it's it's pretty much just getting things switched over, getting warmed up and ready to go. So we should have the start of game two on the afternoon, game three of the series between Lee Scott and Valley Across. It's the Road Warriors and your home Warriors here at John Mills Field on the Lee Scott Sports Network. We appreciate you all being with us as we are just awaiting the start. And, and Kristen was telling you about all the stats about this team. I mean, they have just been dominant in their last month of play, really, is what it feels like. And, and coming down the stretch, too, with postseason baseball right around the corner, folks, the end of the regular season is in just a couple of weeks. And we've got broadcast this week. We've got this game. We also have a a new game on the schedule for Thursday against Pacelli. So uh, that's exciting. We'll be here. That'll be Thursday night right here on Tiger Country 104.5 on the Lee Scott Sports Network. That is here at John Mills Field. So excited to be back on Thursday uh, for that one and a game that kind of popped up on the schedule, but we'll be here and excited for that one. And then uh, we got a lot of games next week to try to wrap up the regular season, Christian. We do. We do, yeah. It'll be a 6 o'clock start. Man, this wind keeps messing up everything over here. For <laughs> It's picked up a little bit in between game one and game two. It really has. Oh, we do. That, that 6 o'clock start on Thursday and expecting a good crowd coming over from the Columbus area. So if you're in town and you want to watch some good high school baseball, this is definitely, definitely the place to be. And I was talking with Coach Cook earlier this afternoon since we had a little bit of a, of a delay with game one and – 
he was saying that that the draw was a little bit unfortunate for for Lee Scott and area play because again we were going back almost or if not over a month ago you got Glenwood week one yeah. that was the very first area series and then Macon East arguably the two the two biggest competitions here in the 3A AISA region and you got those the first two weekends of the series then all of a sudden by no means can you hit the cruise button but when you're playing a little bit lower of a talent level sometimes your concerns as a coach become does our team play down to the level of the opponents and and I think he's I think the question has been answered he's been able to answer that question himself and the answer is definitely no I mean again when you win the games that you're supposed to win it feels nice but when you're doing this to what you're doing to teams I mean winning 18 games in a row Again, I mean, it's something that we've talked about over and over again. It's hard to win games. It's hard to win three or four games because all of a sudden you get that target on your back. You you start getting conscious of it. And all of a sudden you're up to 18 games and you're still doing the little things right. You're still doing, still running the bases hard, taking quality at bats. It shows the foundation that head coach Cook has built with this Lee Scott team, knowing that you have to build that foundation and take care of games that you you need to take care of before you hit that postseason in just over a week. Yeah, and the only other thing I feel like you could be a little bit concerned about is what your team does in adversity, right, during times where they do get punched in the mouth and and that just hasn't happened a whole lot recently for this Lee Scott team. They did it early on, and they responded really well. They may not have gotten all the wins early, but they responded to that in those early region series to start this year. So I think this team's going to be fine come postseason play in just a couple of weeks. And, and look, we're ready for it, man. It's going to be a lot of fun with this squad. It definitely will. Again, you expect to see this team make a pretty solid run in the postseason. And like you were saying, seeing those teams early by no means was a bad thing because you almost saw really, really good baseball. You saw a really ta- a high talent level. And now through this month of April, you've been able to to polish yourself as a team. You've been able to to perfect the little things and make sure that you're doing the little things day in and day out that you need that you need to. So that way, once you get those complications or you hit a little bit of those challenges later in the season, you know how to respond. Lee Scott and Valley Across just about ready. We'll take one final break. Come back. This was kind of our Russell Building Supply countdown to first pitch. We kind of merged it all together for you here on Tiger Country 104.5. That's brought to you by Russell Dewitt Center and Building Supply Experience and Knowledge from the Pros at your hometown home center. We'll give you the starting lineups, defensive rotations, all that good stuff when we come back and we'll have first pitch between Lee Scott and Valley Across. The Road Warriors and the Home Warriors here at John Mills Field. We'll have all all that for you when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network presented by the Orthopedic Clinic. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy, the unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. The Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Experience the pleasure of the pros. 
Russell Buick Center at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience the Trump of Ross. Russell Buick Center at Building Supply. From day one back in 1907, Auburn Bank's mission has been clear to serve our community, see businesses flourish, and improve lives locally by making sound business decisions and responding with care every day. Today, we continue to fulfill our mission with a team of local, commercial, and consumer lenders who are ready to help meet your needs and goals. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender, online at auburnbank.com. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball, and the countdown to the first pitch is on. Brought to you by Russell Building Supply on Tiger Country 104.5. First pitch is underway between Lee Scott and Valley Across. It's now a 1-1 count for Brayboy, who is the leadoff hitter for Valley Across. It's Jake coming back on the mound. And that's ripped into the net, almost over the net, but somehow hits the thin part on the top of the net and saved it from going out of play. It's a one-two count, nobody out, nobody on. Just underway, top half of the first inning, game three of the series between Lee Scott and Valley Across, and that's a rung up called strike three. As the pitcher for Lee Scott is Sam Jackson, number 11 on the mound. He's got the first out of the ball game. It's a strikeout for number 11 in white. Lee Scott in their home whites with the Navy Warriors across the front in the numbers as well, and the Navy l numbers on the back. And Valley across in their road grays with the gray tops and gray pants in the gold letters and numbers on front and back. White sleeves as well with the Valley across Navy logo on those sleeves. First pitch is swung on and missed. It's a 0-1 count, one away. Top half of the Auburn Bank first inning. Auburn Bank champions of you and proud to sponsor Lee Scott Academy Baseball. It's a 1-1 count now, that one on the outside. Starting the defense for the Warriors in the outfield will be Burns, Harkins, and West. And then in the infield, Jones, Martin, Reeves, and Butler around the diamond. Lane Edens, as always, behind the plate. And what we've mentioned already, Sam Jackson picking up the first strikeout on the mound. On a 1-2 pitch that is lifted into center field. It's shallow center and will fall in no man's land. And it is a base runner for Valley Across. Not only a base runner, it's a hit for the VC Warriors. And they've got one on with one away. Top half of the first inning. Not a bad pitch at all from Jackson. Run in on the hands of Jones. But just enough strength to muscle it out into shallow center field for the first hit of the afternoon. Jackson will fire in the fastball and finds it in the zone for a called strike one. He's Christian Griffin. I'm Jacob Goins with you on the Lee Scott Sports Network. Jackson turns got over, him. throws to first. He got the throw, but is able to get the out as well for out number two. Good play. It was a big lead for Jones over on first, unable to get back in time, and a bang-bang play between Sam Jackson and Braden Butler, and the second out is recorded for Lee Scott. 0-1, a late swing in the in the batter's box, makes it an 0-2 count, two away. So gives up the hit, but gets him off the base paths just like that. Here's the 0-2 working quickly now as Jackson on the outside upstairs for a 1-2 count. It'll be West, Harkins, and Jackson, the three do up for the Warriors in the bottom half of the first inning here in game number two on the afternoon, game three of the series. That one's in the same location. Two's all over the place now, two balls, two strikes. And two outs, nobody on, just underway. Top half of the Auburn Bank first inning. Jackson fires it in. Fastball swung on, strike three. Jackson gets all three outs in the inning. Two of them via the strikeout. Gave up the hit as well, but he was picked off at first. The lights are on here at John Mills Field, and the Warriors are coming up to bat. Here in game number three, it'll be West, Harkins, and Jackson when we come back on the Lee Scott Sports Network. 
Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the Orthopedic Clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services, from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Your business of 20 years hits a major growth mode. Then you realize you've spent 5,000 hours on conference calls, 8,000 hours in meetings, a million hours working late, all to take care of your customers. But you'll only trust your one true passion and your company's future to one bank, Troy Bank & Trust. Today, tomorrow, and always. The only bank you'll ever need, Troy Bank & Trust. Member FDIC. It's Lee Scott Baseball Game Time. The first inning is brought to you by Auburn Bank on Tiger Country 104.5. West, Harkins, Jackson are the first three due up for the Warriors in the bottom half of the first inning. As it's scoreless between the Valley of Cross Warriors and your Lee Scott Warriors. Christian will give you the starting lineups, one through nine, the batting order for Lee Scott Academy. Again, we've already talked about it. It'll be Garrett West, Smith, Harkins, and Sam Jackson, one, two, and three. J.D. Burns, Jake Cummings, and Lane Eddins round out the middle. It'll be Braden Butler, Brandon Martin, and Pelzer Reeves, seven, eight, and nine. Jake Cummings will be the designated hitter this afternoon, and Ty Jones, will be at third base for the Warriors. So starting lineups presented by Lee County Revenue Commissioner Olene Price, who reminds you that if you need services from her office, there's the main office at the courthouse at Opelika and satellite offices in Auburn and Smith Station. Another reminder that today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. Whether you're having car trouble in an accident or you own a business and need a car moved, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services and it's going to be a leadoff base runner Garrett West hit it straight to the shortstop it was bobbled gone off the bounce into the chest and just couldn't come up with it so Garrett West will reach on an on an error to start the ball game and another leadoff base runner for the Warriors and Garrett West stands on first Brings up Smith Harkins. He's in the left-handed batter's box. He's got a runner on first. Nobody out first pitch to him is way upstairs and outside for ball number one. Warriors took game one yesterday on the road, 18 to nothing. Took game two here today, 12 nothing. And looking to already got the win, but looking to get the sweep over Valley across. And those wins mean everything. Harkins went down for a golf style swing, sends it back into the netting for a 1-1 count. Every win, every run you can score, and every run that you cannot surrender. Every single one of those areas can be crucial coming down the stretch, trying to figure out those postseason standings. Runner's going to go. That's Garrett West. He'll take off and get to second safely. Pitch was on the inside part of the plate for a 2-1 count. Still nobody out. Runner now on second, thanks to Garrett West stealing it. For Smith Harkins, he's got Sam Jackson, number 11 in white. Standing back behind him in the on-deck circle. Smith awaits for it patiently. The kick and fire in and went upstairs for it. Launched it in the center field. Dies in the air. Back on it in center field and it's off the glove. Hit inside and bounced out. West will go. He'll take off around third. Smith with the speed will get all the way to second base. And Garrett West will score standing up. It's one nothing Lee Scott. What appeared to be a routine fly ball. Soaring a little bit. Maybe got caught up in the wind and just in and out of the glove out there near the Lee Scott baseball logo at the 360 marker. And Harkins was taken off and running regardless, and he gets all the way to second base. So he gets on and brings in a run doing so. Lee Scott takes an early lead. I think it was very similar to what we saw in game one with Smith Harkins in the, the fly ball to right field where it has a little bit of top spin. And the outfielder looks like he's camped under. Then all of a sudden you see him trying to reach down Tried to catch it at about chest high. Was unable to, so Warriors take advantage of two early errors and already tack one on the board. Overcast skies, a little bit of a breeze. Lights are on here at John Mills Field. That floats in past the elbow of Sam Jackson. 
and allows it to go on by. For a 2-0 count with a runner on second, nobody out bottom of the Auburn Bank first inning. Lee Scott's got a 1-0 lead over Valley Across. The kick and fire from the righty. Sam Jackson belts it up the middle. That's going to be another base hit. That's going to be another run for the Warriors. Jackson will hold up at first. It's 2 nothing. Warriors of Lee Scott. Jackson's going to get past on a get to second on a passed ball. He stood on first for a long time. The throw in got away. And more heads up base running by Lee Scott. Sam Jackson stands on second base. He'll take off the batter's gear. May have a pinch runner, and we will. Brings in Easton Gregory, number two. So he'll stand on second base, and it's 2 nothing Warriors. Just heads up base running from Sam Jackson. Three batters, now three errors that the Warriors have capitalized on. And the home plate umpire, or the, I'm sorry, the field umpire had to dance out of the way of that one. Jackson hit that one on the screws, and it knuckled up the middle. Lifted high center field. J.D. Burns, it's shallow in no man's land. Three come in on it. Diving attempt by the left fielder. No. Ball hits the ground, gets picked up. Drop one time. J.D. will stand on second base. Runner moves all the way. Easton Gregory to third. And the Warriors now have two in scoring position. Nobody out. It's 2 nothing. Lee Scott and brings up Jake Cummings. It's the best feeling as a batter when you don't necessarily hit it hard, but hit it right in one of those Bermuda Triangles. The catch unable to be made. Nobody picked it up. So you'll take that double. So we got some some vocal, some vocals coming from the right side. The got it's like the softball American team. American Idol auditions going on. So Cummings has an opportunity and lays off of that one near the wrist for a call. Strike one. J.D. Burns on second, Easton Gregory on third, thanks to Sam Jackson getting on, and Jake Cummings in the batter's box with an 0-1 count. And nobody out, Lee Scott looking to add on to a 2-0 lead in the bottom half of the Auburn Bank first inning. That pitch is out and got around Jake Cummings somehow. It was caught and then got away from him on the back side and snuck around number 15. Yeah, it was impressive that Money even got a glove on it behind the dish as it was behind Jake Cummings, I think he was fully expecting it to hit him. I was, too. I was just going to let it happen, and then all of a sudden, here we are at a 1-1 count. Pitcher throws over to third. It's a hobbler. Gets away from the third baseman into the wall in foul territory. Runners will advance from second to third and third to home, and the Warriors score again. It's 3-0 Lee Scott. There you go. So it only talks the risky pickoffs only happen if you don't talk about it. So there we go. Hey, I'm only one game late. It's fine. <laughs> But that's the reason. I mean, it's, you know, that's not a very common play right there. But just the throw over time and time again by a collection of pitchers like, yeah. And look, Valley Cross got an out doing it in the first game here this afternoon. But it's pretty rare that you see that out get got. And then it's pretty common that you see something like that happen right there. As the pitch dribbles in off the dirt, good stop behind home plate to make it a 2-1 count on Jake Cummings. But Lane Edens. In the on-deck circle, that runner's on third. Still nobody out. The 2-1 count to number 15. Who started on the mound in game one this afternoon. Waits for it. Goes down for it. Lifts it into shallow left field. Parks underneath it. Can't make the grab. Runner will go. Another run will score. Cummings, big turnaround first. He'll make another turnaround second and get a couple of feet off before he turns back around. Throw finally comes back into third. And it is a stand-up double. <laughs> I don't think we're going to give him that credit. We could try, but I don't think we're going to do it. We'll give him, we'll give him, he'll get on second base, but the on base percentage will go up. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So Lane Eddins will step in now. Warriors have a 4 0 lead. Still in the bottom half of the first inning. And may have a pinch runner, and we do. Brings in number 23, Ty Jones. So he'll step out on second base. Since So Ty Jones is playing third but not hitting in the lineup. Does he now the, the courtesy runner for everybody? Is that how that works? Or can I you still so. have or can you still have two of them? Because usually there's, you know, one for the pitcher right. and one for the catcher. Right. Well, Ty Jones is going to go regardless on the pass ball. He'll get to third. Think about going home and decide to hold up. I've just I've never seen 
never I'm seen the, it worked out like that. So that's, I that's would imagine that at this point you would probably just leave him as the runner, and in, in case you, unless you would need somebody else at some point. But I would think that you'd probably just leave him as your go-to guy and see how it plays out. Some would call it a interesting play. Here we go, one nothing count. Lifted shallow into foul territory near the Lee Scott dugout, and it gets out of play. For a 1-1 count on late Eddins, nobody out. That runner is on third, and a 4-0 lead for Lee Scott, bottom half of the first inning. Wind picking up just a hair. Here in Lee Scott, still overcast, guys. Temperature dropping just a little bit as we get closer to sundown. Speaking of that, did you see the solar eclipse yesterday? I did. Wasn't it wasn't it wasn't anything anything crazy here. Yeah. It almost just looked like you had some polarized sunglasses on. <laughs> like for real. It, but it yeah. was weird. You walked outside and your eyes were like it felt like they weren't working the way that they should, but if you if you had just walked outside right at the peak, you wouldn't have really even known anything. It was just the fact that I walked out thirty minutes before and thirty minutes after and it almost felt like it was the normal day again. Third pitch was inside near the belt. That pitch is down near the dirt. For a 3-1 count now if only I had at your some, lane Eddins. Sorry, if only I had some one-of-one one Masters Edition Solar Eclipse glasses. They're so cool. I've been cool. Oh, do you have some? As a matter of fact, I do, actually. Yeah. Here's a, I'll tell you all about them after this 3-1 pit. Delayed Eddins with a runner on third and nobody out. Here it is and stays away from it. He'll take a five-pitch walk and jog down to first base. So Lane Eddins gets on. Braden Butler will step in with runners on the corners. A 4 nothing lead and nobody out. And yes, so at Augusta yesterday, as we're walking in, after you scan your ticket, and yes, this is a flex, and I'm just, I'm just going to say it like it is. Um, as we were walking in, you scan your ticket to get in, and then they're saying, oh, you know, welcome to the Masters, welcome to the Masters. And then they gave you, everybody, the solar eclipse glasses, right? That they always look, but these were the Masters green, had the two Masters logos, and on the inside of it, it said, made uh, made what it's a made specifically for the Masters tournament with yesterday's date on it. As that first pitch is dropped in for strike one, runner moves from right or from first to second. Runners in scoring position now for Brandon Martin. Yeah, that's that's a flex. I mean, it's it was pretty cool. It's, it's cool enough I mean, to it's, see it's the cool. solar eclipse. It's cool enough to to go to the Masters, but the, to be able to have experienced both in the same day did after this pitch that ball. Misses in the dirt, gets back to the backstop, but both runners will remain at bay. Did the golfers stop play for a minute or two while kind was going on? Or was they? I saw only one golfer, and I couldn't tell they were on the other side of a hole, and I couldn't tell who it was, but a lot of the caddies were looking at it. The caddies had some of the glasses and, and were looking at it, and the Masters was posting pictures of everybody looking up at the sky in their, in their solar eclipse glasses. But, no, it was really cool. They had the date printed in there and everything. Jumped on it and dribbled foul back behind home plate. We'll redo it again on what is a 2-1 count. Runners on second and third again. Still nobody out. Lee Scott's got a 4-0 lead in the bottom half of the Auburn Bank for first inning with Braden Butler at the plate. Warriors have capitalized on four first inning errors. Four runs on just two hits. That's effective baseball. As Butler awaits. The one-two lays off of it outside. Good stop behind the dish. It's in the opposite batter's box. Evens it up at two apiece. A heavy slate today in the major leagues as well. Warriors of Orioles have already taken care of the Red Sox. Tigers beat the nine and two Pirates. Now moved to nine and three, but a really solid year. Hit up the right side to the second baseman, picks it up, throws it over rainbow style and gets there for out number one. But the runners do advance from second and third to third and home. And the Warriors have a 5 nothing lead. Ty Jones comes around to score on what is the RBI driven in. Just one away. It's 5 nothing, Lee Scott. Yeah, you don't have to bring up my Red Sox, man. We had horrible news today. Did you see it? Trevor Story? I did, out. yes. They originally said he was out for the year, and then they came back and said he's out for six months. Well, it's like, that's middle of September. Like, that is that's, that's <laughs> borderline postseason baseball. It's basically postseason, man. That's basically the whole year. Jumped on the first pitch off the skinny part of the bat and into the net for strike one for Brandon Martin. Graves 
taking on the Mets. Dropped game one last night to the NL East rival. Rival. One of the very few wins for the Mets this year. It is. The Mets looking at four and six. Braves six and three. Game two, first pitch set for 620 this afternoon. So right after the conclusion of this one, you can turn your TV on. Go ahead and watch some, some Braves baseball. Pitch gets away from the catcher behind the plate. Runner will stay at third. It's a 1-1 one -one count. One away, runner on third. It's a 5 nothing lead for Lee Scott as Brandon Martin, wearing number five, is in the right-handed batter's box for the Warriors. Looks inside, kicks and fires on the 1-1. One -one. Martin lays off of it away from the catcher. Runner's going to come in. Pitcher comes in to cover the plate, but not able to make the play in time. It's 6 nothing. Lee Scott. Reminder, it is Jones wearing number 10, who is on the mound for Valley Across. Two balls, one strike, and one away. Bases have now been cleared for Brandon Martin. He waits her from Jones, stays away from it on the outside. For a 3-1 count, if he's able to get on, it's Peltzer Reeves who will stand in. For Lee Scott, I believe last time I was here was when he hit a three-run homer over the left field wall. 3-1 to Brandon Martin. And stays away from it upstairs, but is called a strike as he tossed the bat, was going down to first. And I'll have to step back in and probably won't be on the receiving end of any generous calls at this point on a 3-2-1 pitch. The payoff for Jones, who stands straight. Lifts the glove, kicks, and sends it in on the payoff pitch. And it's outside. No doubt about that one for a ball four. Oh, Peltzer steps in. Number 14. Oh, just one away. He's got a runner on first. Lee Scott. Has that 6 nothing lead. Won game one yesterday, 18 nothing. Game two earlier today, 12 nothing. And off to a hot start in this one, 6 nothing. Reminder, we'll be back on Thursday, 6 o'clock, right here on Tiger Country, 104-5. As Lee Scott picked up a game against Pacelli, so excited to have that one as the runner goes. Doesn't matter because Breeves takes one off the backside and two more base runners for the Warriors with just one away. I know you wanted to know more about my master's experience. So, yesterday, got to see. So, I really don't. I'm on the inside, I'm crying. I know, but I'll tell you anyway. The listeners want to. They told me. Um, looks like we may have a substitution coming in for it's it's Easton Gregory, yeah, who coming in to bat at the bottom part or at the top part, excuse me, of the of the order. Going to come in for Garrett West. Everybody will make their substitution markings. Runners on first and second. One away, Lee Scott with a 6 nothing lead. Yeah, I heard you said that you saw Scheffler throw a dart. Oh, yes. We were standing behind 16, 16 green. And for anybody that knows the Masters, you know what that hole is. And he stepped up, and they were hitting off the backside of the tee box because, you know, they've got the black mats down to where they don't take divots. Runners are going to go. Here's the pitch, and it's upstairs for ball one. Everybody will be safe at second and third. So he stepped up in the back part of the tee box and lines it up. And the pin was on the front, like the front left, up near the water, and just threw it an absolute dart. Like he walked over and just dropped it next to the pin. It was within about three feet. Don't worry, he actually made the putt. So here's the one, nothing. It drops down. Wasn't bad, but got down near the dirt for a 2-0 count now. On Easton Gregory, wearing number two in white. On Saturday, he'll three-putt it. But <laughs> Yes. Yes, he will. And then, of course, they all stepped up. He, They let their caddies step up and hit, you know, skip them across the water because everybody starts yelling, scoop, scoop. So they, they did that, and and that was really cool. That's going to be a balk. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. They're going to get Jones on a balk. So runners will advance from second and third to third and home once again. Warriors will take another run. Brandon Martin will have the honor of stepping on home plate. It's 7 nothing. Lee Scott runner on third. It's a 2-0 count to Easton Gregory after – the called Bach and still just the one out in the bottom half of the Auburn Bank first inning. 
Throws it in, hard hit down the left field line. It gets through two defenders of Valiant Cross. Pelzer will jog in. He'll touch home plate. It's 8 nothing Lee Scott, and it's a big hit for Easton Gregory. He'll stand up tall on second base. 8 nothing Lee Scott. Really good piece of hitting there from Gregory. Didn't try to do too much with it. Ball in the inner half of the plate. Just stuck the barrel out and ripped it into left field and got himself a one-out double. One of the few left-handed batters you'll see in this lineup today, it is Smith Harkins. Runner's going to go from second to third, laid off of it upstairs, and the runner's safe at third. And a 1-0 count for number 16 in white. Harkins with that triple in game one. Looking to see if he can bring home another one here in game two. Switching sides a little bit. I'm sure you have the, the community side and the community vibe of everything is that ball is fouled down the third baseline. It'll go out of play. What is the the community feeling on on the 2025 decision of mm. of Nike? What is yeah for Auburn for Auburn University? I mean, I think it I I think it's a long time coming, right? I think Auburn has been trying to get away from Under Armour for a while, and and when the contract is up, and I think Nike was there, I think Jordan was there, and I think Adidas was there, but ultimately. It is Nike that Auburn will be wearing in 2025. Harkins lays off of that when it's in the dirt. Good stop behind the dish. To make it a 2-1 count, still one away runner on third. At least Scott's got an 8-0 lead. And I think it was I think it was wise because I heard that Adidas was the silent front runner and it was all but signed. And then there was a little bit of a, a higher up decision of, hey, our top, not executives, but the, the faces of the program is that ball. Is ripped into center field. That'll be another hit for Smith Harkins. Give him an RBI single. But when you're looking at it, Charles Barkley, Bo Jackson, all of those guys are sponsored by Nike. And so whenever you see them, they can't necessarily wear their Auburn gear because you can't see either of them wear their their mismatched brands. And now that you'll be able to see those guys represent Auburn, I think is a really good and a really smart decision. I think Tim Cook had a lot to do with that too, from Apple, of course, with the pull that he's gotten. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what different combinations that come up for for Auburn University when it comes to Nike. As Lee Scott has a nine nothing lead, and the runner advances from first to second. With Sam Jackson taking a first pitch strike, didn't quite agree with it, but he'll take a no one count with just one away. Bottom of the first inning. I would be surprised, but I wonder if if with that new deal, Auburn will go away from the 100% traditional look and it'll bring in possibly mm. an alternate or anything like that. Again, Something fans have been asking for for years. Right. Runner advances from second to third. And by no means am I even talking, you know, complete orange jersey, but just something that gives a little bit of a different look. But with Auburn being so old school, again, the Navy Blues at home and the, the Stormtroopers on the road, still, I think, one of the best jerseys in football. Wild pitch gets into the brick backstop. Runner comes in all the way around, and Smith Harkins is going to score. He'll work his way all the way around the base pass. Untraditionally, but he gets there regardless, and it's 10 nothing Lee Scott, bottom half of the first inning. One, two count, stays away from it. Does Sam Jackson is low and away. For now, a two, two count, still one away. Bases have, they've been active in this first inning, and here we are again. They've been emptied. Once again, it's 10 nothing. Lee Scott, 10 runs on four hits, thanks to four errors also. From Valley across, Jones sends in the two, two, jumps on it. Does Sam Jackson lift it shallow center, paling towards the right into no man's land. The second baseman pops out and makes the grab. For round number two. Uh, Alan Owen will step in. The lone man with two away. That's a good play there from the second baseman. Jones again with the, the sky. Not necessarily dark or twilight or anything, but not clear. But by not means. clear. Can blend in a little bit. The wind swirling. The ability for him to, to go back into shallow center and make the grab. Really nice play for the second out of the inning.
First pitch is swung on and missed. By Alan Owen. No balls, one strike, two outs, nobody on the base pass. It's been a 10 run so far for Lee Scott. And just two outs have been recorded. Stays away from that one in the dirt. Gets through the legs of everybody into the brick backstop once again. Wind has picked up just a hair. Temperature continues to drop a little bit here in Auburn. As we approach the 6 o'clock hour. A 1-1 one, one count to Allen Owen. Allen outside gets away from the catcher into the backstop. Two balls, one strike, two outs. It's been hits, it's been steals, it's been walks, it's been a little bit of everything for Lee Scott in this opening frame. In the final game of the series, Warriors looking to get the sweep over region foe Valley across. Tries to drop it in the zone, can't do so. To bring up a 3-1 count, Ty Jones in the on-deck circle for the Warriors. That'll be a five-pitch walk as Owen will draw, and he'll jog down to first base. Another two-out base runner for the Warriors. Give you sort of an update on what the broadcast schedule looks like. Now that we have that game on Thursday, and that'll be against Pacelli at 6 o'clock. Then next week, it's a busy one, partner. We'll have Springwood in game one of that series here at home. I believe that is on Monday. It is. That'll be on April 15th as Ty Jones steps in, awaiting his first pitch. And lays off of it for ball number one upstairs. So Springwood at home next Monday at 4 o'clock. That'll be right here on Tiger Country, 104.5. Then on Tuesday, the doubleheader games two and three of the series. That'll be at Springwood. We will be there. You'll start it. I'll join you afterwards for that game. As Jones hops on it, it's a laser into left center field. One hop, two hop, off the wall. Run's going to come around third. Here comes Owen. He'll be peeling into home. He'll get the windmill sign and the... Ball's going to get away from the third baseman, Jones. It's going to get from second to third, and he'll be held up at third base. So what was a traditional double will get him to third thanks to a getaway ball. At least Scott's got an 11-0 lead here in the first inning. So Monday here against Springwood in game one, Tuesday at Springwood for games two and three, and then our final regular season broadcast will be next I believe that'll be next uh, Thursday against Lowndes. I believe that's how you pronounce that. The doubleheader, that's on Thursday. Uh, looking for, still looking for a start time on that one before postseason gets here, man. It's kind of crazy that we're already to, to postseason play. Yeah, so Davis steps in for Lee Scott. He's got a runner on third. I gotta call another another balk. It's called for the balk. So Lee Scott will bring in the 12th run of the first inning. And the first two games have been cut short. Interested to see what the what the game plan slash strategy is going to be, be here with a 12th piece in this first inning. As Davis McIsaac steps in, where number 25, he's got a 1-0 count. Two, still two away in the bottom half of the first inning. Lee Scott has a 12. Yes, that is 12 nothing lead. Over the Warriors of Valley across, 12 runs on five hits and five errors from the visiting Warriors. That hits off the dirt, off the catcher's chest piece, and gets away for a 2-0 -oh count.
Davis jumps on it. Hits straight to the third baseman against Lewis Glove. It'll be into left field. He'll turn first. He'll stay at first. Throw comes in. And McIsaac is on first base. It's another two-out base runner for Lee Scott. Now number 21, And with that, Lee Scott's going to take the field. Going to be really honest. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Lee Scott had 12 runs. I got another base hit. It's a 12 nothing lead. Lee Scott's going to take the field. Coach Cook's going to come out and talk to the to the umpires. I'm going to leave it right here for just a second. I think it's, and, I think it's just going to be one of those things where you're letting Sam Jackson get another inning of work in. Okay. Let him. Um, basically throw a, a live bullpen essentially just to to continue to get the arms loose to continue to give guys reps so i'd be i'd be surprised if this goes to the home half of of the second inning i wouldn't think so but i've seen crazier things and it looks like coach cook's gonna walk over and talk with with valley across tell you what let's take a quick 30 second break we'll be right back here on tiger country 104.5 on the lee scott sports network the Goosh Performing Arts Center at Auburn University is Alabama's newest premier destination for the arts, bringing you the very best of Broadway, dance, music, and more. Learn more about upcoming performances and our calendar of events online at gooshcenter.auburn.edu. That's G-O-G-U-E center.auburn.edu or call the box office at 334-844-TIXS. Your Lee Scott Academy Warriors baseball station is Tiger Country 1045. Game action is brought to you by Auburn Express Tour. Now, back to the action. All right, so. As we attempt to figure out what the format's going to be here. It's 12 nothing Lee Scott. That's what I can tell you. We're also in the top half of the second inning. I can also tell you that. And I can also tell you that Sam Jackson is on the mound and delivers a first pitch strike. And you might think that's a lot of things that we do know, but... Compared to the things we don't, <laughs> we just don't know. Oh, two count, though. I do know. Lights are on. The trees are green. It's starting to get dark. <laughs> That's what I can tell you. Jackson fires it in upstairs with a one-two count. A couple of raindrops. You shut your mouth. Hey, I'm just speaking statistics. Again, it doesn't doesn't work that way. For, it's the opposite for me. So The one-two slides out of the zone for a two-two count now. Just underway, top half of the second. Any reminder that today's game is presented by Auburn Express Towing. As Sam Jackson sends in the two-two swing and strike three. One out recording, Sam Jackson getting a little work in here on the mound and started this game, but, but looking to just get a little bit extra work here with some big games coming up for this Lee Scott team. Fires it in, strike one. And again, I don't I don't hate the move from, from head coach Jared Cook as well. I mean, you've had a a 45-minute home half of the first inning that you – to be completely honest, you didn't know when it was going to end. So rather than keeping those guys stable in the dugout, go ahead and let your guy get another inning of work. He picks up his fourth strikeout of the afternoon, does Sam Jackson. Good morning, good afternoon, good night on that one. And look, folks, I'm going to go ahead and, and warn you with some spitting rain as we sit out here at John Mills Field. We'll probably get into a quick orthopedic clinic postgame show and try to get wrapped up and get out of here so we don't get caught in any – Potential weather that is coming through. Jackson fires in strike one with two quick outs here in the top half of the second inning. We'll save a post-game interview with head coach Jared Cook on Thursday against Pacelli. And then as we get through the rest of the regular season, that one has some movement on it from Sam Jackson. Can't find the zone, though, for a 1-1 count two away. 
Got him on a little curve ball on the, got him again. On a one, two count, two away. Again, nobody, nobody on. But two outs and a 12 nothing lead for Lee Scott. Jackson fires it in, swung upstairs, called strike three on the swing. I believe that's going to be your ball game. Lee Scott sweeps Valiant Cross here at home. Took game one yesterday, took games two and three today. 12 nothing Warriors in an inning and a half. Untraditional yet again. But, hey, Lee Scott gets the win. They get three more wins on the season. We'll take a break and come right back, have a quick orthopedic clinic postgame show, and wrap it up on Tiger Country 104.5. Bending, stretching, walking. The simple moves in life are a real challenge with joint pain. When that happens, the orthopedic clinic is here to help. The Orthopedic Clinic offers a comprehensive range of restoring services from total and partial joint replacement to bone health programs, physical therapy, and sports medicine. With offices conveniently located in Auburn and Opelika, the Orthopedic Clinic is close to home and here to help you stay in motion. Visit theorthoclinic.com to schedule your appointment today. Not every sports team has a glue guy. The unsung hero that does the dirty work. Society's glue guys are towing companies. Whether your car is in an accident or you own a business and need a vehicle move, we all need tow trucks. When you need one, call Auburn Express Towing, offering 24-hour towing services. AET specializes in parking lot and private property towing in Auburn. Call 334-821-6033. Auburn Express Towing, located at 615 Opelika Road. Experience of the pros. Russell Do It at Building Supply. Russell Building Supply is your hometown home improvement store. You'll find what you need when you need it. And as a Russell Rewards member, you'll be in the know about monthly specials and exclusive offers. Russell Building Supply, East University in Auburn, across from Cary Creek Publix. Experience from the pros. Russell Do It at Building Supply. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union. Off road in we love our members. Our members love us. Oh, yes. Ever since I got off active duty, they have helped me. I would recommend to anyone, if you really want to get your finances in order, come and see for yourself. I promise you, they will help you get on the path to financial freedom. Four Seasons Federal Credit Union with two local branches. Membership eligibility required. Accounts federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Let's get back to the ballpark. It's Lee Scott Academy Baseball on Tiger Country 104.5. Warriors sweep Valiant Cross. The Warriors of Valiant Cross get swept by your Warriors of Lee Scott. How about that? Lee Scott gets three big wins over two days of work. It was 12 nothing here in the final game of the series. Lee Scott. Just continues to do their thing. Christian, another win for Lee Scott. Another shutout for Lee Scott. And that run differential continues to climb. Climb would be an understatement. You've hit the 200 run mark in, the, in a 19-game win streak for the home Warriors. Have outscored your opponents plus 190. 200 to 10 in that 10-game. Or, I'm sorry, in the 19-game Winning streak. I've now had 14 total shutouts in those 19 games and have not allowed a run to score in 11 straight contests. That's unbelievable. Well, Lee Scott gets another win. They get another series win, and they continue to surge to the postseason. This was a region win and a big one at that. Warriors get two wins here today, sweep the series over Valley Across. And as we told you throughout the broadcast, we will be back here on Thursday against Pacelli. Uh, that will not be a region game, but one that the Warriors picked up and wanted to play. So excited to see what that looks like on Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening here at John Mills Field. Yeah, head coach Jared Cook is really excited about that contest because Again, very soon, 1A and 2A will begin their postseason run. 3A, not quite yet. But again, as you wrap up in 3A, you're not wanting to play those extra games before postseason. So he's wanting to, to get a little bit of a different competition, see some different arms. And I think he's really excited. It should be a really, really good crowd on hand as well from those guys at Pachilli coming over from Columbus to play the Warriors. So if you're in town... John Mills Field is the place to be to try and watch your Warriors extend their win streak to 20 
games. I mean, that is that is remarkable. Again, regardless of who you're playing, regardless of the competition, baseball is a humbling game if you don't play it the right way. That being said, Warriors playing the game the right way and clicking on all cylinders. Lee Scott will take on Pacelli. That'll be here on Thursday. That game will begin at 6. We'll go on the air at 5.45. You and me, partner, will be right back here on Tiger Country 104.5 on the home of the Lee Scott Sports Network. Tiger Country 104.5 brought to you by the Orthopedic Clinic. Warriors winners in game 3, 12 to nothing over Valley and Cross. We appreciate you being along with us. Our next broadcast is on Thursday against Pacelli 5.45 on Tiger Country 104.5. Tiger Country Net and wherever you can listen to Tiger Country. And again, on the radio, on the app, fm.com, whatever you want to do, tune in Thursday, 